Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Welcome to Knitting Knowledge and Pearls of Wisdom. It's a little before noon but I wanted to sign on early because I know it takes a little while for everybody to log on. So we'll just give it a minute and then we'll start promptly at 12. Hope you're all well this week. And we're on week six, episode six I should say. Another 30 seconds or so. Hope you've all been practicing your knitting. I think you have from some of the photos you've sent me. Wonderful work. seconds. This takes a while, I know. We all log on. Okay, 12 o'clock it is. So welcome everyone to Knitting Knowledge and Pearls of Wisdom. Uh, this is episode six and we're going to talk about intarsia today. Uh, can everyone see and hear me? Let me know if you can or if you can't, well, you won't be able to tell me if you can't perhaps, but anyway, let me know. And if you're new this week, do let me know where you're from as you, as you join in. I'm Cheryl Lampard. I'm an image consultant. My company is Style Matters International. And apart from that, two of my passions are sewing and knitting. And especially knitting, which I've always found very therapeutic and relaxing. And I know a number of you do too. So I used to have a yarn shop called Yomo in Brighton, England. And one of the things that I was asked to do was teach people to knit. And I loved to do it then. And I'm delighted that 30 years on, I'm doing it again now, albeit on a different platform. Um, if you are new to this, you might, uh, if this is your first week, you might be interested in uh, this basic knitting abbreviation sheet, which is available to you completely free. I did post it as a JPEG on my page last week, but if you'd like to have a PDF copy, just direct message me with your email address and I'll be happy to send you one. It just might help you with some of the basics of knitting. Okay, I'm going to move that out the way now. This is actually something as, as well that I know some people have found useful you with your, your yarn qualities and the weight of yarn. I can also forward that to you as a, as a PDF if that's of interest to you. Just tell me which one you want. Okay, I'm going to move that out of the way now. So, we're going to turn the camera around so that you can see what I'm going to be doing. Okay, first off, I want to just ask you how you're all getting on with your cables. I think by the photos that you've sent me, you're all doing really well. You're a really clever bunch. So last week we talked about cables and we did the traditional type of cable. But I want to tell you that you cables don't have to be as traditional as that. This stole that I know you've seen in the background before when I've had it on the, the dress form, this is also a form of cables. They're just an irregular type of cable, a bit more complicated because you've really got to keep track here, but the technique is exactly the same. It's cables. So you can, a cable doesn't have to be the traditional classic cable that we've seen. It could be something uh, a little different, something like this. So you can do wonderful things and we will touch on that in, in other episodes. But let's start with, let me ask you a question. Does anybody know what these might be? If you do, just say in the comments box and I'll ask my cameraman to tell me if anybody's got an idea of what they are. Anything coming up there? No? Okay. Not to worry. So I want to thank Kina Yoke for this suggestion. She had been to her doctor's office last week and she noticed little straps being worn by the uh, members of staff there. And when she inquired about what they were, uh, somebody, a friend of the practice had been knitting these. 
and they're really little ear savers. What the um, team members had done, because their ears were getting torn to pieces by the elastic from their masks, and they were actually looping the elastic round these buttons, and, and this is worn at the back of the head. So it's saving their ears tremendously. And it occurred to me this might be a nice little project if you, you, you need one them yourself or you, you have the people in a doctor's office that could benefit from them. Now I would say you probably need to check with your doctor's office or your practitioner if they can accept these because clearly they're not medical grade. Um, but you might even find that they're helpful to you as well because it looks like we'll be masked, wearing masks for a, a, lot, uh, a lot longer in future. Anyway, I can send you, uh, later on I will post exactly the number of stitches that I cast on to do all these. But th 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 really it's a very simple thing. This is probably the simplest one. I think it probably works perhaps the best. This is just 20 st stitches that I cast on and I worked oh, maybe 10 rows. You're aiming to get something that's about four inches by one inch and you want a little bit of stretch. Now, ideally, I would have worked these in a cotton yarn. These, this, these aren't cotton, but ideally I would have, I didn't have any cotton. I just worked with what I've got as probably you are too. But if you, if you are thinking of making these, ideally you want a cotton yarn because that can be washed at a really nice high temperature. This one I did is just garter stitch and I increased, I increased as I went up for a few rows, then decreased. The key thing is you need a little bit of stretch. This one is just seed stitch. Again, you've got a little bit of stretch, but quite honestly, this is probably the easiest one. If you are interested in the weight of yarn that I used, and again, it will depend what you have. I actually used, this is an Aran weight. So I use, it's a medium weight yarn and I worked on a size, in metric terms, it would be a four and a half, and in American size, it would be a seven needle. However, you can play about with that depending on the needles that you have and the yarn that you have. One of the key things on this thing is to make the buttons, put big enough buttons on. This doesn't need delicate little buttons. Remember, the elastic's got to be looped round, so if the buttons are too small, they're, they're going to pop off. Anyway, just a little project if it's of interest to you or anyone you know. Okay, right. So the exciting focus of today's lesson is intarsia. Intarsia is a technique for colour work. Now we touched on colour work a couple of weeks ago when we just did simple stripes. That's one of the simplest ways to bring in colour. We, we worked on those. But intarsia is a technique that you bring in the colour within the row. The word itself, so if we can focus in on, on this, the word itself comes from the Italian. I think it means into serra, which means to insert. And it's a, it was a woodworking technique where you're, they're fitting in pieces of wood within a frame. So it, it's quite appropriate, really. But it, with intarsia, you're changing colours within the row. And it's sometimes called picture knitting. Um, picture knitting was very popular back in the 80s when we had Yomo. And um, we used to do a lot of picture sweaters there. You're literally creating a picture on your knitting. And, and whilst I'm talking about that, somebody that I have missed thanking is Pauline Smith in the UK. She has been a champion of knitting knowledge and pearls of wisdom. And she used to do a lot of test knitting pieces for me um, back in Brighton. So uh, thank you, Pauline Smith, very much for all your support and suggestions. Okay. So one of the important things with intarsia is that because you're changing colours within the row, you've got to actually do something with the yarn, otherwise you're going to get holes when you change colour. So I'm going to flip this over and show you what I've done here. And I've deliberately left all these yarn ends because I need you to see that. So I started off with a border. Then I changed my colour. I started a few rows of garter stitch, a couple of two two stitches either end. Then I did this colour and then this colour and then swapped them back. It's, it's putting me in mind of a piece of Battenberg cake actually. It's making me hungry now. Anyway, back to our knitting. 
So you twist the yarn whenever you change colour because if you don't you're going to get a hole and that's not something you get when you're just doing horizontal stripes but you do with these vertical lines. So when you twist there's a technique to that. Now when you change the colour there are various ways of working in the colour but I'm sticking with the simplest which is actually just joining the new colour on with a knot. You can easily undo that when you come to work in the ends which we'll do another time but if you start with a knot keep it loose then you're, it's not going to slide everywhere you can try it without but I find it always slips about so every time you change color you have to twist the yarn if you're working horizontal rows like this you twist it every row if you're going if you're uh, um, color block that you're doing is on a diagonal or it's shaped then there's a you, you only really need to do it every row that you're moving the color along but that'll come more obvious when I do a demonstration in a minute in a moment so when you're working out one thing I would say is if you're doing a pattern with a color block or you're you know let's say this is a, a piece of knitting and you want to do a couple of squares you don't want to join them up like this but you want your main color which would let's say for purposes of illustration it's this one then you want a, a pink block then you want to go back to your your beigey color then you want a purple block whatever it is that may only be three colors we only use three colors here but you need little balls of yarn to make those color changes so although there's only three colors here I've actually used four little balls of yarn because I've got I need here I'm changing color here that's two three and then I'm changing back here so you might think well I'll just do on my sweater I'll do like blocks of color or you know if you want to get adventurous circles of color or something but every time you change that colour, you need another bobbin of yarn or you need another ball of yarn. So it's important to think about how many colour changes there are and not just colours. Um, and you can do, if you're doing a picture sweater or something like that, um, or it may not even be a sweater, of course, it could be a cushion cover or something like that. But whatever your work is, you've got to think about how many changes of colour you need. Now, many years ago, I did some designs for a, a cashmere house and they were actually machine work, knitted pieces, um, and they were really quite complicated. Um, I'm glad I didn't actually have to knit them up in hand knitting, but um, they were machine knitted, but there were a lot of color changes. I'll post some photos of those do, uh, later on so that you can see just how complex you can be with color knitting. Um, and indeed, if you're hand knitting, you can still bring in a lot of colors, but the technique is still the same. One thing is not to confuse intarsia with feral knitting or stranded knitting. Stranded knitting is where you bring, um, it's usually a repeat pattern of two or more colors across the row. And very often two colors are worked at the same time. Then you bring in another color, but you're bringing it consistently across the row. It's a, it's a repeat pattern. That's a different technique, which we will cover later in another episode, but you're, you're actually bringing the yarn across the back of the knitting then, and you get a very thick um, uh, fabric. Anyhow, let's get back to this one. Let me show you how to do this. It does take a little bit of getting used to. I've started off with a sample here, which is basically a smaller version of this. And I, the reason I did it smaller was because otherwise it would scrunch up on my little kitty needles that I show you so that you can see which is in left and which is right. Don't be alarmed by the amount of yarn that's hanging off it. What I would recommend, now I have seen all sorts of ingenious contraptions for when people want to separate their colors of yarn. Some people do put it in each ball of yarn in a jam jar and move the jam jars about as they twist the yarn. Some people put them in sort of cardboard boxes with, with slots that they just move the yarn. What I would say is don't even think about just thinking, well, 
I'll just manage with the balls of yarn as they are. If you start doing that with anything more than two colours, you can get in a terrible jam and a terrible tangle. And trust me, I know. So what I would suggest is that you, you wind off some yarn and you may have to rejoin it as you go. It depends really on how big the block of colour is going to be. But you want to wind, wind some yarn onto, I call these knitting fish because they remind me of fish, but they're just little bobbins. You can make your own bobbins with some cardboard. They don't have to be this shape. It could just be almost an H shape with a little slot in the top here so that your yarn winds around. But I, call, I use my knitting fish, which I've had for years. So, so wind an uh, amount of yarn onto your little bobbins or your cardboard bobbins, whatever they may be. If it's only a small color change, then you could probably work with just a manageable amount of yarn. You're going to find that out pretty quickly because if you're constantly having to wind a bobbin, you know that you need more. The other thing you could do is just wind a piece, uh, wind some yarn. I'll just show you quickly around your fingers. I'll just undo this a bit. If you don't have anything to hand, you could just wind some yarn around your fingers like this. And then, you know, make a little butterfly out of it, really. Tie that around like that, slot that through, and then you can pull that out from the other end. So it's a little yarn butterfly. That works just as well. I'll show you that again if you want to see. I'm sorry, I didn't have a spare piece of yarn to hand, which was very silly of me. I'm just winding it round my fingers like this in a figure of eight. And the reason I'm doing it like that is because I can then pull out from that free bit of yarn. If I could just get my fingers out, I can pull out from there. But just wind it round and then just kind of loop that through so it you're knotting it and it'll dangle from your knitting. That's another way to do it. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we do this. So I've made this, of course, a little bit more difficult for myself because I'm starting off with one colour here. So note, I've got this colour here and I've, I'm just working with a manageable length here of yarn. I'm sorry, my cameraman is getting cross with me. I'm getting in the way of the picture. Then I've got a bobbin of pink, one of purple, and then I've got another strand of yarn of my beige again. Okay, so I'm going to turn slightly so you can really see what I'm doing. So I'm going to just do my first two stitches here in my beigey colour. Okay. So this is the knit row. This is all knit stitches on this row. So my yarn is at the back. Then I'm going to bring my pink get that out a bit. And I'm going to bring it under that piece of beige yarn, okay? That beige yarn is coming under and I'm going to knit my stitches. So you can see on the back, I've twisted that. I've held that beige yarn. I've twisted it. So I'm going to knit up to my purple. You're still only using two, sorry, one yarn at a time, one color at a time. So now I'm coming up to where my purple yarn needs to be. Now you can see if I was just to pick up the purple yarn and knit with it, I'm going to get a hole. If I just carry on knitting with my purple, look, I've got a big hole. That's why you have to twist it. So again, the same thing. There's my purple yarn, there's my pink. I'm going to lay that over the top and bring my purple from underneath. And now I'm going to carry on with my purple. You'll see it much more clearly when we do the, the wrong side. You'll really see the twist in there. The only thing with these bobbins, you do have to sort of release the yarn as you go along. But you'll get the hang of it. It seems very cumbersome at first but it really isn't as bad as it seems. Okay, now I'm back to my beige. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick my beige up, bring that up from underneath. Okay. 
So now I'm going to turn so you can see where I've done the colour changes, I've twisted the yarn. Now, on the reverse row, because I've done two knit stitches as, as edge stitches, I'm going to have to make sure I get my yarn in the right place, my working yarn. But that's really not a big deal. Okay, so I'm doing my two stitches here. Now, I need to bring this forward, obviously, because I'm doing a purl row here. But the technique is still the same. I'm just going to bring my purple yarn up from underneath and carry on purling. And actually, on the wrong side, you can really see how the yarn twisting works. So I'm about to change colours again. And if you see, if I was to just pick up my pink yarn and not twist it, I'm going to get a hole, which I don't want. So I lay my purple there and I bring that up from underneath. Twist your, your yarn the same way each time, then you get a nice neat row or a vertical line, shall, I should say, of twists. It does give you lots of yarns, ends to weave in at the end, but that's okay. Now I've got to put my yarn back because I want to do two knit stitches. So it's exactly the same thing. I'm going to bring that on from underneath, but I'm also going to bring that to the back of my knitting because I need to do two knit stitches there. Okay. I'm going to show you one more time. So you see, I've got no holes. It's nice and neat. Now, I I wouldn't make your twisting. The tendency, that the, the inclination is to think, oh, I need that nice and loose. When you're doing this, think of it as working in one material. You, you wouldn't ha suddenly want your yarn to be loose in a piece of stocking net stitch, so you don't want it loose here. So whilst you don't need to make this really tight, you do need to sort of firm it up. You don't want this being loose and all over the place, otherwise it you kind of get ugly loops in your knitting and holes where you don't want them. So I'll show you another. We'll do it one more time. Oh, I've got myself into a tangle. No big deal. Okay. One more time. Knit. 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 I know this looks like the cat's been playing with the yarn and it looks a mess, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be fine. But just remember not to have too much yarn going at one time. That's always the temptation think oh wonderful I'll have six different colors going at the same time but you probably if you've got six different colors how many transitions have you got you could end up with 12 bobbins along your knitting and that's perfectly doable but I would suggest to start off with unless one of your you're one of those brave people that likes to start with a really challenging project I would suggest that you start with a fewer number of transitions at first Bringing my yarn up and round, and we'll do one more purl row. And actually, as you go along, it's really not that many ends to weave in. It looks it, but it's really not. One more row, so you can see the purl row. Remember, I've got to bring this round. So that I can bring my pearl, purple pearl knitting back up. If you work with great big balls of yarn, some people do. I do not because I find I get into a tangle. And you spend more of your time moving things around than you do actually knitting. Twisting my yarn, bringing the, the pink up under the purple and carrying on. That's really all we're doing. 
and you get into a technique where you just release the yarn as you go. bring my beige yarn back up and I'm also bringing that round because I need to finish on two knit stitches. So that is the basis of intarsia knitting. That's all there is to it as they say. Okay so that's a smaller version of that my piece of Battenberg cake knitting. So I hope that got you going with some uh, intarsia. I know, uh, I hope that was helpful for you, Deb Canham. I know intarsia was something you were interested in, but if there are questions about intarsia or any of the other knitting we've talked about, please don't hesitate to post in the, the comments box. We're finishing a little before time this week, but that's okay. Thank you for joining in. Camera's going all over the place. Sorry about that, everybody. Thank you for joining in this week. I really appreciate it. Don't get stressed about your knitting. I'm here to help. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. Whether it's about this piece of knitting or anything else we've done, I'm here to answer any questions. And again, don't get in a tangle with your knitting. It is knitting, it can all be resolved. And that's how you learn when you make mistakes. So stay safe, stay home, keep calm and keep knitting and I'll see you next week. Thank you again for joining me. Stay well everybody. Bye bye.